everyone, Allison Berger here with Be Terrific, streaming live from NAB 2017. We, we 2017. I was just joking with my next guest that I feel like I've almost said NAB 2016. I have to get in the mindset that we're in 2017. Um, so we are streaming live from the live you. Live U booth. I don't think I've had enough coffee. Um, <laughs> it's been a great first day here at NAB, and I am now joined with my guest, Andrew Cross from New Tech. How are you doing today, Andrew? I'm doing great, thanks. Have it's you had more here. coffee than me? Probably not enough either. There's <laughs> almost no amount of coffee that you can have that's going to get you through a day of NAB. You think so? I don't think so. Should I've someone never... given me like a, a like a a list of things like prepping, because this is my first time here. Yeah, so something I do actually every trade show is I try to scout the show floor because lots of the booths have coffee machines in their booths, so I always try to find the best espresso machine. So you have you best. found it yet? I have not found it yet this year, but oh. I've still got a few days. Okay, well when you find it, you have to let me know. Absolutely. <laughs> so what have you been, so you've been roaming the, the booths and the halls a little bit. What have you seen so far? Gosh, I... I have unfortunately been coming for so many years that it's, you know, it's changed, NAB's changed. We're moving much more into IP technology, computing technology, instead of traditional video technology. So that's a, you know, that's a big change. And I think that there is, there's definitely a, a, a broader adoption of that. Um, what do you but, think about that change? Is it for the oh, good, the bad? You know, we, we have built a whole company around that. So, you know, we, we is, is absolutely for the, you know, this is the future. It's transformed, you know, every other industry. You know, if you think about it, your phone used to be a dial phone. Right. And, you know, digital technologies changed it so that we now walk around with phones in our pockets and cameras and all sorts of wonderful things. And that's just, that's going to happen to us here in the video industry as well. Mm -hmm. And it's actually ironic that in many ways we're behind, you know, the, the, the technology being used out in, you know, that people carry around in their, you know, in their pockets is, is probably exceeds a lot of what we have here. And we're behind in terms of adoption of, you know, internet and IP workflows mm -hmm. and things like this. And so it's starting to come to NAB and that, you know, that it's going to be a big change. Right. So where do you think we're going? Why, how, how, how far behind are we? Oh, we're a few years behind. I mean, the, you know, we're definitely going to a world where, you know, video sources anywhere can be seen anywhere else that you can put a show together by pulling the pieces from wherever you want in the world with the people that you want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to enable anybody. Look, I mean, we are here in Live Use Booth and we're doing, we're broadcasting a show. Mm -hmm. If you go back 10 years, that was not possible because right. you need a huge antenna out back and you need to get an FCC license. We can now take it live to the internet. That, that's a huge change. And, mm -hmm. and as technology moves towards, it's going to allow more and more people to have their own shows to get their own word out and um, people like Facebook with Facebook Live are making that easier and easier so that it's very easy for people who just want to broadcast in a limited area that is of huge interest to a small number of people. They can do that and, th and that is going to be a big part of where broadcast goes. I think we're still going to have the big broadcasters. Do you though? Do you think the live streaming is going to take over? Well, I, I feel awfully like saying hasn't it already. Mm. I mean... There are as many people watching your local news on Facebook Live as there are on the air. Or it's not quite there, but it's very, very close. Um, I mean, the you know, it is. It, you know, you only need to draw the lines. I mean, we're going to get there. I mean, we're certainly going to get. I still think there's a place for the big broadcasters, though. You know, there is a certain type of content that needs to be produced and that people want to watch, and that's still going to be there. But I think that. You know, for everybody else, you're going to be able to go and get a lot of information on Facebook, YouTube, and I, I think we're there. I mean, our, my kids uh, watch on, on YouTube now, not on, not on TV, and so I, I would say, you know, for a big part of the audience, we're there. I'm going to continue this conversation, but Andrew, I want to make sure all of our guests can hear you properly. So just hold your mic a little closer. I will hold it. You know, closer. they have to hear and that that British Texas accent you have going on. Yeah, I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder if there's a name for that. <laughs> you, you can come up with it. it. It's actually incredible. I've lived in Texas 18 years, and I still have a, that I have any hint of a British accent left <laughs> is amazing. That's all right. You got to stay true. You got to stay true to the Brits. Oh, absolutely. Well, here's the funny thing. My my, my eight-year-old daughter, who has never lived in England, has a British accent for reasons totally unknown. Um, my wife is French, 
So it's not like she picked it up, uh, you know, from my wife. Right. So somehow she was born with a British accent. That's how strong <laughs> English, English genetics are, I suppose. Well, I love to hear about your family, but let's get back to the technology a little bit. So the thing that I find really interesting and that's been kind of baffling my mind is that, so live streaming is taking over, right? But at the same time, so many more people are watching things on demand. Who watches TV live anymore? So it's, you know, where is the balance between the two if, you know, if live streaming is str going so well, but then people aren't watching live broadcasts of television? Well, I, I think that um, we have to, live streaming doesn't mean live. It means produced live. It means that you and I sit here mm -hmm. and we talk and it's recorded live and it goes, you know, into the media, into the ether live. But it, I think more and more people are starting to watch those shows, but they're, they're not necessarily watching them live. Um, so I, I think that the definition of live, you know, I mean, I think that we have alternative definitions. I mean, I think that it was a lot of these shows are produced live but not watched live, and I think that that's mm. happening a lot. But I think that the total amount of media consumption in general is just going up and up. You know, it, 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 it is clear we're all watching more moving images than we ever have before, and it's not going to, you know, we're not going the opposite direction. And so, you know, there's, there's a space for both, and I think we're going to have live shows. They're going to be viewed either while they're live or not while they're live, and there's going to be just an increasing amount of content that's going up. No one's going to know where to watch. You already have 300 something channels and you don't know what to watch. <laughs> well, um, but, 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 that, but that's not true because, you know, on things like Facebook, you really have one channel, which is your channel. And okay. the thing that's very clever about Facebook and the reason why it's revolutionizing, revolutionizing video in, in many ways is that it takes all of the things that it knows you're interested in and it aggregates them into your feed. And so you really have your channel. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, you know, there's 300 channels and nothing on. You don't have to go through 300 channels to find things that are very likely to interest you. And so, the, the, it, you know, that meant that you, back then you had to find the media that interested you. And now increasingly with YouTube and Facebook and a lot of the other tools, they're working really hard to make sure that they're giving you the media mm. that's interesting to you. And so it's really not the same thing as it was, and I think that is probably why it's different, and that is why there can be more content now than there used to be. Hmm, interesting. So which, so two questions. So which medium do you prefer to watch live streaming content on? Is it Facebook or is it YouTube or you know Instagram Live? You know, there's so many options out there. Or, or Live View and on Be Terrific. Or, and um, the other question is, what content are you finding? Like, has your interest changed in what you enjoy watching now that you can watch it live? So I hardly, I mean, th th this, is, this is bad, but I wonder if I'm not more typical than one might think. I watch remarkably little live. I watch almost everything on demand. And I do watch shows that were produced that were live, and I just didn't happen to watch them when they were live. And I, you know, and quite frankly, Netflix and Amazon are where I consume a huge amount of my media, and they are the big broadcasters of today. And if they aren't the biggest, they will become the biggest. But you're finding that your 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 daughter daughters. Yeah, they're... but but you know that I share that. So I'll tell you one thing that I absolutely don't do is I never watch on my TV. I have a TV and I never use it. I I always watch on iPads um, or iPhones or some tablets, as do my kids. So TV certainly in our house is is gone. We don't have. I'm I'm one of the you know, the, the proverbial cable cutters. I don't have live TV. Any live TV I watch is going to come through the internet. And um, yeah, my, my kids, you know, they actually share remarkably similar, similar viewing habits to me, believe it or not. I don't watch My Little Pony a whole lot. But, but you other don't. than that, I know. I'm so I, surprised. You know, I, <laughs> my, I, my daughter tries to get me to watch it with her, but you know, that, that it's a pretty hard sell. <laughs> So do you think but this but is I do where watch it in the same place. She watches it on Netflix. I watch other stuff on Netflix that's not My Little Pony. So do you think televisions are just going to get knocked out of the... Uh... Do you watch a lot of TV? <laughs> I, I, I do not own a television in my so tiny New York City you, apartment. But you've probably answered <laughs> it. But no, but you've answered a part of the question right there. And right. Um, the, you know, like, like so many things, it's a question of convenience versus quality and what's happened is that tablets and cell phones have become good enough quality and they have overwhelmingly better convenience and so people are choosing to watch on those devices and sure there's still going to be a few things you know i the i lied very slightly believe it or not i i watch you know movie nights once every month i watch on the tv 
Um, I'm sure that, you know, if I was big into sports, which I'm not, I would watch my, my teams on the TV. Right. But still the majority of the content isn't on the TV. And I think, that like, like yourself, I think right. that, you know, this is the, the trend, uh, you know, that, that it is going. And, and I'll tell you something else, which is that a lot of TV was built around one-hour shows. Mm. And I, I find myself, and I, and I think that this is relatively common, are watching much shorter segments now. So we're, we're having to design shows that are built around, you know, maybe 10-minute snippets or shows that can at least be cut up into pieces that size and can be digested in smaller pieces. And so that's changing TV quite a bit. But, but you know, that's the way it's going. And I, right. and I think that, you know, we can all sit here and fight it or we can say, you know, this is wonderful. This, you know, we're walking around with a TV in our pocket now. Don't kind of crazy go, to think that that's what we're but, doing, but right? But it's absolutely true. We're walking around with a TV in our pocket. We don't need to go home to watch TV anymore. And it, and it, 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 it gives people, you know, huge opportunities. I mean, it, you know, the, the, if you run a small, if you run a sports team, you know, it's just your high school, it means that your whole audience, you've got a TV, they can, you can be on TV now and you can broadcast them and everybody cares more about their kids mm -hmm. than anybody else or more about their family than anybody else or their grandkids or whatever. And they're going to watch those shows where they might not have watched TV. And that's, you know, that is when it comes back to Facebook and the three, you know, I mean, right. it, it's you, you, you getting more content that you want all the time. And, and that's what's, you know, really changing. And that, that's what's changing here. And it's a real challenge because a lot of the networks are trying to work out how they exist in that world. Um, and they do exist, but they exist in a different way right. because they're not there just, you know, they aren't, they, it's not a monopoly anymore where they have all the viewers. And so they, they, this is great for us, the viewers as well, because it means that people need to produce interesting content that appeals to us. It, it's, it's a not game just, changer. It's absolutely a game changer. And so, you know, there's more competition in terms of how you get eyeballs than there ever was before. And that, that's great for everybody. I mean, it, more people are watching video more of the time. There's more people producing and there's more content. I mean, that, that's great. But it does leave a lot of people with serious challenges because the way that they're used to working and the way that things have gone for, the, you know, for the, all of our you know, life um, are changing. So how are you finding people overcoming those challenges? Is that, is that when they come to you? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, we, we obviously, as a company, our goal is obviously to help them solve those challenges. But, but they, they have no choice because if they, if they don't solve their challenges, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be there to solve them because they will go out of business. I mean, that, that's, you know, that, that's the reality. So they're, they're solving them. And we're seeing great new video as a result of this. We're seeing, you know, I mean, we're here on a show live today right. that wouldn't have been possible. And, and, you know, there's so many new ways that we can make video now. And, and... You know, I mean, it's exciting. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. So let everyone know if they are watching from Vegas where they can um, see your stuff. And so, so you know, I work for New Tape. We're in South Lower Hall. Okay. You know, we, we, we're there. Come and see us. You know, we've got, a, we've got a lot of exciting stuff to show and show people how they can make live shows and get them out to air and make them look like, you know, it's the Super Bowl. Um, so that, you know, that absolutely everybody's always welcome to come visit us. Great, because we're looking like the Super Bowl right now. I'm about, to, I'm about to score a touchdown. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for joining me. Once again, I'm Allison Berger, and we'll see you soon back here at NAB 2017.